what is this hitch sprung's disease so it's also called as congenital megacolon or congenital a ganglionic megacolon or primary megacolon okay so many names for this so a ganglionic means the nerves are absent in a portion of the colon okay nerves absent in the portion of the colon so what will happen here you can see nerves are absent here so it is unable to push out the fecal matter out okay so here what is absent nerves are absent so the fecal matter cannot get out okay so this uh, is kind of swollen i mean not swollen uh, enlarged so this is mega colon okay congenital a ganglionic mega colon primary mega colon or hirschsprung's disease okay what's the spelling h i r s c h okay h i r s c h hirschsprung's disease okay so basically um, this is the congenital one the other side they are showing the acquired one okay there is an acquired mega colon also which we are not looking at in this okay now uh, these are the uh, layers of muscles uh, sorry nerves that they have shown so here you have the intestinal lumen let us say here you have the lumen of the intestine where the food is going so what is there here you have the a mesner's plexus and here you have the myentric plexus which they have shown here myentric plexus mesner's plexus so these all are absent in these people because of which you uh, the fecal matter cannot get out so it will cause um, what will it cause people mega colon so you can understand this baby this is a congenital condition this baby will not pass stools okay so the same pathophysiology they have explained here absent uh, parasympathetic ganglion cells are absent in the neural plexus of the intestinal wall yes we got that so this is absent okay now what are the types of hirschsprung disease there are types of hirschsprung disease also you have ultra short segment short segment long segment total colonic the entire thing is it so these are the types there's one photo for types also right so here you have they are showing you types of hirschsprung's disease okay so here you have ultra short then you have uh, short then long and total total uh, so right ultra short short long total yeah so ultra short is anal canal and terminal uh, rectum short is anal canal and entire rectum long is um, okay all this you can understand right so this is anal canal and small part of rectum this is anal canal and full part of rectum and this is something this is total okay so now let us go to clinical features how will these people be um, the male children are more often affected these people can have down syndrome remember this they can be associated with down syndrome so they will present with uh, intestinal obstruction kind of a thing Uh, then um, they fail to pass meconium yes we this also we know they fail to pass meconium and um, uh, it can get complicated uh, by enterocolitis so now it is getting irritating little more complicated uh, not passing stools really uh, we don't care isn't it but now it is becoming enterocolitis that may result in a perforation and septicemia is getting worse and worse so the intestinal perforation can happen all the things can enter your uh, abdomen right and then it can cause septicemia okay severe diarrhea can also be there abdominal distension vomiting can happen so here diarrhea can happen they saying because um, it looks like after some time it's just giving up severe diarrhea with blood and mucus okay and they can go into hypovolemic shock if they vomit so much and have diarrhea and uh, etc right so they can go into hypovolemic shock okay when you do rectal examination you will see that the rectum is empty very important right the rectum is empty somebody who had to deposit all the fecal matter into the rectum has not looks like okay there is no perianal soiling so as a doctor when you put your finger there you will expect some fecal matter that won't be there okay people so if the rectum is empty there is so clean rectum perianal soiling is not there such a clean clean finger you are getting it means to say that <coughs> there is hirschsprung's disease okay on the other hand in acquired mega colon in acquired mega colon that means this is a condition that came later they will have perianal soiling so easy to know right isn't it and in those people in acquired mega colon sphincter activity is not there okay in uh, these people the sphincter activity is there because sphincter has no issue it is the colonic segment which is not able to push the fecal matter forward the sphincter is fine so the the your finger whatever finger you put in if this is the finger you put in the sphincter will tight on it in a hirschsprung's disease okay <clears throat> looks like then let's move on chronic variety 
a chronic constipation can be there for the first few weeks of life. This suddenly that anybody will see, right? And the child will come with abdominal distension. Stools are goat like, goat pellet like. Okay, but will it pass? Will it pass it? Obviously, it has passed something. That's why they know it's like stone pellet. Okay. This is about hair sprung disease. Most commonly, it can be associated with Down syndrome. Okay, it can be associated with Down syndrome because the same genes seem to be connecting this. Okay, and then um, now what are the differential diagnoses? Very important. So you will have to see um, <coughs> acquired medical megacolon or not. Right? This can be a differential. Hypothyroidism, these the people will have low metabolism, they will not be pa passing stools, they may have constipation. Meconium plug syndrome, again, they are having some kind of a obstruction, blockade. Again, syntestinal pseudo obstruction, colonic neuronal dysplasia. So, there is some other neuro nerve issue here. Okay. So, it's not that the nerves are absent, some dysplasia they are talking about. So, basically, everything that can cause an obstruction or a low uh, movement of your fecal matter like hypothyroidism etc. So you got the differential right people? Now let us go to the complications. If you do not handle this uh, what will happen? <coughs> we already told this. Intestinal obstruction, perforation, peritonitis, septicemia, enterocolitis, growth retardation, right? Abdominal distension, now, investigations, what will you do for these people? You did a parrectal, right? You did a parrectal examination, but that we are putting in clinical investigation. Anyways, full thickness rectal wall biopsy. So, you have to take a biopsy of this rectal wall. Otherwise, if you don't take full thickness, how will you know whether the nerves are present or not, right? So, you will have to take a biopsy of this um, and you will have to check whether the, there is absence of these ganglionic cells and if there is any um, what are they saying? Hypertrophic nerve fibers in the nerve plexus. So there are some nerves, is it? But they are hypertrophic. Hypertrophic nerve fibers in the nerve plexus. Absence of the sympathetic ganglion cells. Okay. And there is some hypertrophy of the nerve fibers in the nerve plexus. So where should you take? You should take the biopsy above the anorectal junction. Okay. You should take it above the anorectal junction. What should you take? Biopsy. So you will take the sample tissue and study it under the microscope. What will you find? You will find that the parasympathetic ganglion absent, nerves are absent and other nerves have some hypertrophy. Okay. Barium enema you can use and then you can check the, how it is goes. So if from, from up it is not coming. Yes. So from here they are putting some barium enema, barium sulfate. That's what they use, right? 3.6% solution of barium and the intermediate zone appears as a cone appears as a cone with proximal dilatation and distal narrow zone. So, distally it should be narrow. Yeah. So, proximal dilatation and distal narrow zone which is the characteristics of Hitzsprung disease. Let's look at this uh, image if it's available anywhere. So, here's the image uh, in a one month old child the barium enema shows how proximally it is so dilated everything there's lot of place for it uh, the contrast and all but here there is narrowing. Right, distally there is narrowing. Okay, so this is what they said. Now, what we are saying is, instead of a uh, biopsy of this kind, they are telling about some suction biopsy, total mucosal suction biopsy. They like more than the um, is more popular than biopsy. Okay, because there will be no hemorrhage, infection, and scarring. I think this is more like using a sharp object. Right, uh, that's why hemorrhage. <clears throat> so, uh, suction biopsy is what is the word here, suction biopsy, okay. So, now let us uh, move on here uh, to the treatment, guys. We have reached the treatment because we are looking at surgery video, right. So, you have to write the treatment, correct. So, what is the treatment? This is sprung disease. See, in emergency, what they are doing, see, mostly they are saying if the rectosigmoid cases are affected mostly, then you just do a right transverse loop colostomy. Now, what is this right transverse loop colostomy? Look at this. So, this is the transverse loop, right? Ascending loop, transverse loop, descending. So, that's what we know. This is the transverse loop. So, they seem to have made a colostomy to the skin. They have attached something. So, this is the loop transverse colostomy they are saying, right? So, they are not removing anything here, uh, there, right? They are just doing a colostomy. But definitive surgery, actually what they are doing is, they are um, uh, resecting the aganglionic bubble, 
okay so the same ganglionic bulbul is actually the bad part so we will remove this bad part which is not having any <coughs> function and what we will do we will pull the good part and attach down okay so to be uh, something like this so here you have something that is not working which doesn't have nerves right something here which has the nerves and here you have down the uh, anus and rectum and all that. so what they are doing they will remove this a ganglionic uh, bubble and they will pull this down and connect this down which however was working fine this is the pull through procedure okay so um, <clears throat> look at this here they have done something a little different okay this is um, a duha mel duha duha mel's uh, pull through surgery what they are doing here is the a ganglionic part fully they have not removed you can see here the a ganglionic bubble is there here see a ganglionic bubble they have shown here correct this is the a ganglionic bubble <clears throat> now this a ganglionic bubble uh, posteriorly see they have cut that and uh, this uh, ganglionic bubble they are taking and attaching it to the a ganglionic one the only thing that seems to be gone is the transition zone transition zone they have removed so let's understand this um, duhamel pull through procedure what they are saying here is uh, uh, the rectum is transected above the peritoneal fold and closed a proximal ganglionic segment that is the good one right ganglionic means it has the nerves etc is pulled down behind the rectum and then incision is made in the posterior wall of the anorectum above the dentate line as deepened uh, and you are suturing the end of the proximal colon is sutured to the opening in the posterior anal canal all around okay so uh, something you are able to understand what they are saying trying to say in pull through right you are pulling the up part okay pulling it down whichever is good and attaching it so that they will evacuate the bubble okay so uh, that some other surgery other than duhamel you have some saos mucosectomy and then there are some comparison between duhamel and swenson's pull through let's look at this also wait <clears throat> duhamel is a retrorectal pull through technically this is easy so this is what we looked at uh, looks like duhamel 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 recto rect, retrorectal pull through swenson is endorectal pull through it's difficult to do so anyways uh, you have understood what pull through is right that is what our uh, intention was you have pulled the head sprungs okay so uh, there are many other surgeries that they have shown here where they have shown uh, this is that uh, um, ganglionic bubble directly they have anastomosed right down so this this is the one that they are going uh, posteriorly and all that okay so hope you understood hirschsprung's disease congenital megacolon also called as congenital a ganglionic megacolon or primary megacolon so basically uh, uh, there is a section of colon which doesn't have nerves so the fecal matter cannot uh, exit or pass forward so it will uh, uh, become dilated like this it is called as megacolon primary uh, megacolon is or congenital where it is in babies they never pass stools or very hard pellet like stools <clears throat> acquired can happen but uh, in acquired uh, there will be sphincter problem okay and um, pathophysiology what did you see these people will not have myentric plexus and mesner's plexus in the uh, intestinal lining so the a ganglionic basically parasympathetic uh, ganglions the absent in this uh, types you have uh, ultra short short uh, long and total right ultra short short long and total you have then uh, clinical features you saw that uh, male children are affected more they can uh, also have down syndrome possibly they will have intestinal obstruction they wouldn't have passed meconium when you put uh, a finger you will see that your finger will not get soiled because the rectum is empty but the sphincter is really healthy and nice these people can develop uh, enterocolitis uh, perforation septicemia etc diarrhea hypovolemic shock vomiting also can happen so uh, these people if it is chronic condition they can pass stools which are goat pellet shape like okay and they are associated with downs we told you they, so the complications will be intestinal obstruction perforation peritonitis enterocolitis growth retardation septicemia so this uh, condition they can ask even in pediatrics for you so if you have learned uh, this topic in uh, surgery anyways pediatrics also you will answer right what are the differential diagnoses acquired megacolon in this either 
finger will get so soiled in uh, per rectal examination because this is an acquired condition previously they would have passed um, all the fecal matter hypothyroidism metabolism will be slow so that is why they, they may have constipation meconium plug syndrome is an obstruction looks like and again pseudo obstruction and then neuronal dysplasia so some other nerve problem <clears throat> so could be the differential diagnosis of hisprung's disease investigations you will do paradigmatical examination you will do biopsy what type of biopsy you should do suction biopsy they are saying is better than other biopsy because uh, no hemorrhage and all will be there you need a full thickness uh, sub uh, rectal sus, uh, wall or you can take that submucosal um, suction they are saying because you want to check the nerves right so you need to go a little deep and take the biopsy and uh, there will be absence of parasympathetic ganglion uh, cells but they and there can be hypertrophic nerve fibers in the nerve plexus and where should you take this biopsy about the anorectal junction even if you do barium enema you will see that uh, uh, distally it will be constricted and proximally it will be dilated and uh, what type of biopsy we told you should take submucosal suction biopsy is better <clears throat> how will you treat in emergency basically you will do a right transverse loop colostomy just to make sure that you can get the fecal matter out you are not removing any part of the bubble etc um, but as of definitive surgery they are removing this uh, aganglionic bubble and they are pulling the good part ganglionic procedure uh, ganglionic bubble down and connecting it to the exit okay so this is the duhamel pull through surgery uh, it is also called as uh, the, rec the retro rectal pull through technically this is easy the other one is swenson then you have some sobs mucosectomy also as some treatments okay so this is all about um, hirsprung disease hope you have understood hirsprung disease congenital megacolon bye bye